Since 1954, the ACC Tournament has been one of the biggest, brightest, and most entertaining shows in college basketball. It has a history filled with Hall of Fame coaches and legendary players. Greensboro has hosted the ACC Tournament more than any other city, which makes it the perfect spot for the ACC Hall of Champions. This museum helps tell the storied history of a league and a conference that is so ingrained into the fabric of this city. But don't just take my word for it. We've had the tournament for at least 28 years, and it really is something that everybody in the city looks forward to. I think the men's and women's um, tournaments are really synonymous with, with Greensboro. Um, it's always interesting to watch Twitter feeds and things like that when the tournament isn't in Greensboro. The people saying, you know, this needs to be in Greensboro. Greensboro really is the home for this. Greensboro Mayor Nancy Vaughn knows better than most how important the ACC tournament is to our area. In addition to her experience in city government, her father Fred Barakat was assistant commissioner of the ACC for decades. The whole conference was a labor of love for him and the way that he was just so enthusiastic about it and the relationships he's had with the with the coaches and the Coliseum. Um, you know, I know that he spent countless hours at all of the different venues, literally counting seats, checking sight lines, want, making sure that the fans were going to get the absolute best experience they could. I remember having discussions with my dad years and years ago as the ACC started to expand. And he kind of saw the writing on the wall that when you have schools from way up north and way down south, um, that they were going to want to look at other locations. I don't think he would be surprised where we are now. I think he would be disappointed. But I think he understood, um, as we understand, that the ACC has changed quite a bit in the last 20 years. Greensboro has earned the nickname Tournament Town, and the ACC Tournament is a big reason why. For over 70 years, the tournament has dazzled fans with high-flying acrobatics, dramatic last-second heroics, and iconic moments. The ACC was founded in the spring of 1953 as eight schools broke away from a bloated 17-team Southern Conference. The Big Four from NC dominated the ACC Tournament in the early years of the league. From 1954 to 1970, Duke, Wake, NC State, and North Carolina accounted for all but one of the ACC championships. Twelve schools have won the ACC tournament. Duke leads the way with 21 total championships, while Clemson is the only original member of the ACC to have not won the ACC tournament, but they have been runner-up twice. The first ever ACC tournament was hosted at Reynolds Coliseum at NC State, but since 1967, the tournament has been played on a neutral court. No venue has hosted the event more times than the Greensboro Coliseum. As of 2023, the complex has hosted the event 29 times. Coach K's 15 ACC tournament championships are the most in ACC history, as are his 69 wins in the tournament. NC State has been a part of both the highest scoring and lowest scoring games in the tournament's history. In 1974, the championship game, NC State defeated Maryland 103-100 in overtime, and the lowest scoring game in 1968 as the Pack beat the Blue Devils 12-10. Tar Heel legend Lenny Rosenblum's 45 points in the 1957 quarterfinal still stands as the most ever by a player in a single tournament game, while Duke star JJ Redick holds the record for most career points scored in tournament history with 225. There have been so many memorable games in the tournament's history that trying to rank them would be a fool's errand. And while I am a fool, I thought it would be better just to talk about some of the most memorable games in the tournament's history, starting all the way back with the inaugural championship game in 1954. Way back in 1954, the inaugural ACC championship game was played at Reynolds Coliseum in Raleigh, North Carolina. That matchup pitted two rivals, the hosting NC State and the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest, against each other. The game did not disappoint with the then 18th ranked Wolfpack defeating Wake 82-80 in overtime. Junior Mel Thompson led the way for the Wolfpack, scoring 28 points. Thursday, March 9, 1967 marked the first time the ACC tournament was played on a neutral floor as the games were held in the Greensboro Coliseum. The action kicked off at 1.30 p.m. with South Carolina and Maryland christening the court with a close game as the Gamecocks walked away with a 3 point victory. Since then, the ACC tournament has been played exclusively on neutral floors with games taking place in Charlotte, Atlanta, Landover, Tampa, Washington DC, and Brooklyn in the years since. 
1974 ACC Championship game is widely regarded as the best game in tournament history. Player of the Year David Thompson and NC State were the number one team in the country. They were set to take on Lefty Dreisel's fourth-ranked Maryland for the ACC title and the chance to represent the ACC in the NCAA tournament. The epic game went into overtime, and with just seconds remaining and the Terrapins down by one, they would turn the ball over, ultimately losing 103-100. to Wolfpack big man Tom Burleson led his team to victory behind a 38-point performance. After both teams lost to each other on their home court, this grudge match was held down in Atlanta. It was a well-rounded effort by the Tar Heels, who had six players score in double figures as they beat their rival 77-74 to and give legendary head coach Dean Smith his 10th ACC Tourney Champion. In 1995, the Heels found themselves back in the ACC title game but ran into one of the single greatest tournament performances of all time. The Heels took on Wake Forest and Randolph Childress in Greensboro, the game going into overtime tied at 73. Childress scored all nine of Wake's points in overtime, including the game-winning shot with five seconds left, giving the Deeks an 82-80 victory. Childress was named tournament MVP after scoring 107 points over just three days. And finally, in 2004, Maryland would enter the ACC tournament as the sixth seed and go on a magical run beating 15th-ranked Wake Forest and 17th-ranked NC State before facing 5th-ranked Duke in the championship game. It was another OT thriller in Greensboro as Gary Williams in Maryland ended a 20-year drought by defeating J.J. Redick and the Blue Devils 95-87. Many of those games are immortalized right here at the ACC Hall of Champions. There are so many great exhibits to come and view and spend your time here. And to give us a little bit of taste of all there is to see, I'm joined here with Dent Bradford of the Greensboro Sports Foundation. Thank you for joining me. Well, thanks for coming and uh, look forward to kind of giving a, a little taste of what's here and a uh, little tease so everyone will come in. All right, let's get started, shall okay. we? Talk about this chair from the very first Women's Final Four. So the, this was the first national championship uh, won by a, a, an ACC team. It was North Carolina. You defeated uh, Louisiana Tech in Richmond. And then you can see since then, the ACC has had two additional NCAA titles and been in a part of 25 Final Fours and all of the other, and actually more wins than any other conference in the NCAA tournament since 2014. Moving on over here to the men's basketball display, I gotta talk about these soda cans down here. Give me, give me a little bit of history behind them. Well, in 1982, when North Carolina won the national championship, Coca-Cola came out with a bottle, and I have one of those at home, and then they also had a Carolina blue can. Well, the next year, NC State won, so of course we have the NC State bottle, Coca-Cola bottle, and then you have the True Blue Soda from Duke's na first national championship. Now we've entered kind of the final display of that early rotunda here at the Hall of Champions. What is this display? How, how would you sum it up? Well, I think it's very important, the dominance of the ACC on the national scale. So we've talked about football, women's basketball, men's basketball, but the dominance of the nationals on the national scale whether it is ice hockey with Boston College, lacrosse with Duke, field hockey with North Carolina. We even, uh, we're looking over here and there's rowing from Virginia. And then back to a, a soda can. So uh, lacrosse, you know, the ACC is a predominant national champion and that's what this uh, exhibit is really about. After you enter that first rotunda, you find yourself here in the center of the Hall of Champions. There are so many team displays around us. Let's talk about this one right here with NC State. What are some of the pieces that have brought this thing together? Well, I think the most significant aspect of it is the first pink tennis shoes, which came from the 2006 Hoops for uh, Hope basketball game uh, that were produced by Nike for Coach K. Yao and the NC State Wolfpack, and how much that phenomenon has grown from women's basketball to men's basketball to all sports. Now in October, you see pink uh, cleats on football players. So, but this, these are the first pink tennis shoes designed for college sports, and we're lucky to have these here in the Hall of Champions. And each of these displays for each of the ACC member schools have its own little piece of history. Talk about what you guys were thinking about when you were putting these pieces together. Well, it was really a collaborative effort with the schools. We want all of these items belong to the schools. 
and the schools were very instrumental in what they wanted to showcase and what they wanted to focus on. And while there are individuals that are outlined on here, it is more about the athletes and the schools and the tradition and of course, the mascots. <laughs> All right, as we kind of round out the tour here, we finish on this immaculate display of all the champions in ACC history, starting back with the very first year of conference play. Kind of talk to me about what this is. Well, this represents, as, as a Hall of Champions, every single champion in every sport documented on this wall. So we start with the 1954 um, Maryland Cross Country Championship, which was the first one. And uh, throughout that year, Wake Forest winning basketball and the different teams that were in it. And then it goes literally all the way to uh, this past spring. Right, and again, this is why this is the Hall of Champions, right. not a Hall of Fame, right? This sort of immaculate display of the, the school's history in the ACC. Correct, it's, it is truly a display of the champions, whether the ACC champion or national champion, they're all represented here from the Atlantic Coast Conference. And it's, it's pretty neat, you know, to, to sit here and look and look at the names and see the schools and, and how they're represented and from the past to the future. Well, thank you so much, Dan, for showing me around this immaculate Hall of Champions. I can't wait to come back here on my personal time, spend some real minutes looking at some of those displays. And uh, I highly, highly recommend anyone who's coming in town for any of the tournaments or into Greensboro whatsoever, come stop by here. This is a must-see. Thank you again for joining us. Thanks for coming out. The action on the court is what brings people to Greensboro, but the entire city takes the tournament town nickname seriously. In addition to coming to places like this one, the ACC Hall of Champions, there are plenty of places to go in between games like ACC Fan Fest. Even if you don't have a ticket, you can make your way to the Coliseum grounds to bask in the tournament feel. You can catch a mascot or two walking around or practice your jump shot at one of the many hoops available. So if you don't have a ticket, don't fret. There's plenty to do in Greensboro to experience the ACC tournament. The ACC tournament will always have a home here in Greensboro. Long before the NFL, NHL, and NBA came to North Carolina, we had ACC basketball. Growing up in the Triangle, I remember the unofficial vacation that was the ACC tournament. Students and teachers unified together, listening and watching the games in the classroom. As we enter a new world of college athletics with ever-changing super conferences and billion dollar TV deals, it'll be more important than ever to remember the humble grassroots beginnings of the ACC. The passion for this league and the history that inspired it continue to live on in this city and this state as we all await expectantly for more memorable moments to be made on the court.